No, I am not on crack. Yes, this is generally how I am on a daily basis. I guess we can't call the White House the White House anymore, so let's refer to them as the Nut House. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, I am Kevin the Skull Anderson. Welcome to Spot the Liberal. As you can tell by the recent screenshots that I have taken, we are living in godless times. Ladies and gentlemen, we are living in godless times. We have a racist, dementia-suffering pedophile as our president for the next couple of years who is illiterate, cannot speak coherent sentences, and is bought and paid for by the billionaires of Wall Street. We are living in a time and age where it is illegal to tell the truth about the government that oppresses you. We are living in a time and age where it is illegal to talk about the CCP, you know, the Chinese Communist Party, that has been slowly but surely taking over every aspect of your life and my life. And I'm telling you now, if that's not a clear indication of the path that this country is heading, then we're just going to have to suck it up for the next two years and pray to God that they don't rig the midterms. Even though they clearly will rig the midterms at this point, because let's face it, America is a complete and total disaster. America has failed. Completely. America has failed in every single way imaginable. And in this episode of Spot the Liberal, I'm going to explain to you why. Okay, let's get started. Democrats will stand up for foreigners and illegal immigrant criminals who sneak into our borders and kill a bunch of natural-born citizens for no particular reason other than financial gain and to game the system. But, and this is a huge but, and I don't mean this literally, I don't mean this figuratively, I don't even mean this metaphorically. I mean this in general, because they'll stand up for foreigners, they'll stand up for illegal immigrant scumbags, they'll stand up for politicians and themselves, they'll stand up for people in Wall Street, but... When it comes to people like you and I who struggle on a day-to-day -day basis, who barely get by on whatever the frick it is we get by on, they won't stand up for us. They won't bat an eye at our struggles. And ladies and gentlemen, when a government gets too big for its britches to where it doesn't stand up for you, that means... There is a problem. A huge, huge problem. We live in a time and age where it is socially acceptable to be stupid. We live in a time and age where our government abuses their powers vested in them by us and we were stupid enough to allow these idiots into our electoral positions to begin with. We hired these people to do one job, work for us. And what do they do? They fuck us. I'm telling you what, if that's not the God's honest truth, I don't know what is. Cause let me tell you right now, we are living in godless times. And I know I've said that a few times, but I cannot stress this enough. 
It is so important. And, oh, let's get into our next story, by the way. I'm running out of time on this one. There is a scam going on. <laughs> you weren't expecting that shit, were you? There is a scam going on, and it involves Black Lives Don't Matter, also known as BLM. Which is a terrorist organization, by the way. Black Lives Matter raised $90 million last year in funds in the year 2020. The funds used to help black communities, nothing. They spent nothing to help the black communities, but they gained $90 million for themselves to promote their racist, fascist, Hitler-esque agenda. Godwin's law has been in effect for many years, people, and you ought to know that by now. And in case you're tone deaf, let me run this by you again. Funds raised in 2020 for Black Lives Matter, $90 million. Funds used by Black Lives Matter to help the black community, zero. Zilch. Nada. Let me let me let me screenshot this a little closer to you. Funds used to help the black communities by Black Lives Matter. Nothing. None of the 90 million dollars that they spent went to the black communities. This shows that BLM is a racist terrorist organization. If you people are too stupid to see this, I do not feel sorry for you. Because it's the truth. And the truth has set me free, and it ought to set you free too. And one day, it will. Here's our next story. Mr. Biden, we've watched your speeches. We have to ask, are you illiterate? N -n no, absolutely not. My, my parents were married at the, the time of my b birth. No more questions. <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> let's make fun of Joe Biden for the next four minutes. Let's, let's make fun of his crap performance as president in eight weeks as POTUS. Ladies and gentlemen... Joe Biden was never ready to be president. He was never truly going to succeed at it anyway. Let me explain something to you, okay? This guy is a racist pedophile who suffers from dementia and probably Alzheimer's too. This guy cannot speak a coherent sentence. This guy cannot put two words together and yet... 50% of Americans think Biden is not up for the job of POTUS, physically or mentally speaking. This man is almost 80 years old, and you mean to tell me that 85 million people in this country, most of them illegal immigrants and dead people, saw him to be qualifiable as President of the United States? I don't think so! I don't think so. In reality, Joe Biden is the most illegitimate paper president in the history of the world. This guy could not fill up a coffee shop, and you mean to tell me that 85 million people voted for this fuck? What, are you kidding me? This is a joke. The presidency is a joke now because of people like Joe Biden and Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi who are clearly too old to do their jobs and should be in nursing homes or dead. Don't take my word for it because I'm not the only one to say this. Ask the 75 plus million people whose voices got censored by Facebook, by Twitter, 
by Google, by Amazon, by the electoral process that is clearly outdated and needs a complete overhaul. Okay, let me let me let me just go ahead and mimic Joe Biden again, okay? Just just for your entertainment. Crap, I still have 1336 days before I lose in 2024. Look at all of the destruction that I've done in seven weeks. God, I hope America and I will survive my one term. I wish I could just quit and go back to bed. No, Biden, we wish you would just succumb to your dementia and die in a hole already. That's what we wish for. People, this guy is illegitimate. He is not your president. He was not elected legally. This was a coup attempt by the Democratic Party and China and the World Health Organization that is run by a terrorist, by the way. And you wonder why America is the biggest laughing stock in the history of the world. On to our next story! George Floyd's family was awarded $27 million. $27 million. Because a shit excuse of a human being and a police officer named Derek Chauvin supposedly did his duty in offing one George Floyd who was high on fentanyl and COVID-19. It was like winning the lottery from my family when I overdosed in police custody and to take my family said I was worthless. Let me let me explain something to you, okay? Here's the thing. Alright? George Floyd's family should not have been awarded a damn dime. You know why? Because they had their chance to raise him. They had their chance to teach him right from wrong. When they couldn't teach him right from wrong, he turned to crime for a solution, and it turned out to be more of a problem than a solution. This is what happens when you allow the government to raise your kids instead of your family. It's really that simple. Ladies and gentlemen, I stand by what I said. George Floyd's family won some $27 million in a settlement. But they don't deserve a damn dime of it. You know? They don't. They don't deserve a dime of it, but yet they're rich. They won the lottery because one of their own died in police custody. Here's the thing. My good friend on Facebook, Brady Burrell, posted, and I quote, Community policing, heralded by BLM as the solution to systemic racism, is in fact a STESI police Zerzit Sung program that has already been active for decades, mainly targeting blacks and African Americans and encouraging criminal lifestyle for the theme of these mind fucks. It's gone prime time now. Their idea of not being racist is to expand their racist, unconstitutional, unconstitutional! Yes, unconstitutional program to all races, including whites, including Hispanics, including Asian Americans, including immigrants of all ethnicities, including Indian Americans and Native Americans. BLM wants to expand their racist, unconstitutional program to all Racist. You know what the solution to BLM would be? Defunding their asses. Black Lives Matter is a terrorist organization that should not only be defunded, but also dissolved because it is a cancer to this country. 
And to think that eight years, eight years of an African American born in Kenya was responsible for what you see today. Next story, you know, speaking of World Health Organization, Bill Gates and Tedros Adamon, they are not doctors! Bill Gates and Tedro Adamon are terrorists. They are terrorists. One was a tech nerd until he decided there were too many people on the earth. The other is a Marxist terrorist that took over the World Health Organization a couple years ago. Ladies and gentlemen, these people are the epitome of what it represents to sell out. They sold out to a satanic, Luciferian, New World Order agenda that promotes the slaughtering and the killing of innocent human beings who did nothing wrong And you wonder why we're repeating the atrocities of Nazi Germany some 80 years later. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what has been going on for nearly a century. Under our noses, mind you. I want you to take a look at this picture. This might be an ordinary picture to you, but there is something symbolic behind this picture. I'll get to what it means in a moment. But before I do, let me remind you that this picture is very symbolic of the world and everything that it represents. This world has devolved into nothing more than a prison planet. You want to know why? Because these rings, these rings represent destroyed families. Facebooker T, Facebooker J.D. Young said that wedding bands that were removed from Holocaust victims in 19. 19- 45 were removed prior to them being executed. Each ring represents a destroyed family. Never ever forget. Nazis tore down statues. That's going on now in America. They ban free speech. That's going on in America now. They blamed economic hardships on a group of people. That's going on now. They instituted gun control. That's also going on now. Now, does this sound familiar to you? Well, it should. Because I'm telling you people right now, everything that the Nazis did back then is exactly what the Chinese Communist Party in China and America and all over the world are doing right now. Dear world, the Chinese Communist Party will infiltrate your government. Chinese enterprises interfere with your political stance. China will harvest your home like Jinjiang. Be aware or be next. It is that simple. Many of us want to believe that China isn't this terrorist cult from the deep that has been plaguing its own people for decades, but since the days of World War II, that's exactly what China has been doing. You people may not see it, But the Chinese Communist Party has a complete influence on the electoral process in America. And that needs to end soon 
or else it will be too late. On to our next story. Ladies and gentlemen, according to Rami L. Chamaz, or Chama, I should say. Sorry for butchering that last name. But according to Rami L. Chama, there is no point in trying to wake up the ones who are happily asleep. Dark forces will prevail in a sinful world. We have to understand that and adjust accordingly. Resistance is futile. Vadim Chernov says that according to a LinkedIn article from Tony Robinson, the Michigan National Guard troops in D.C. were hospitalized after a Democrat-run city repeatedly fed them raw, undercooked meals with metal shavings. This is tyranny at its worst, people. And you know, Fatia Harndahl has a point. We are stronger than any of them. We can do it. We the people, according to Carol, according to Carl Husey, we the people have the duty to arrest them. And, and if I butcher any of your names, people, I apologize. But we the people have the duty to arrest them, which have been stated in our constitution for over 15 decades. That's 150 years. If you find this hard to believe, then just click here on this network and see for yourself. What's more, these thieves can be charged for treason and put away for life or executed. There is a website called theamericanstatesassembly.net. I encourage you to check it out. It'll save your life. Which reminds me, there is a statement made by a guy named Soren Kirkgaard. He famously said, There are two ways to be fooled. One is to believe what isn't true. The other is to refuse to accept what is true. You want to know how you stay aware in this world? Distinguish truth from fiction. You've got to distinguish the facts from the crap. If you cannot do that, then you are a group thinker and you're easily brainwashed. Once you become easily brainwashed and led to believe anything that a socialist or a fascist or a communist or a Marxist tells you, then you're too far gone. You, my friend, are too far gone. If you are that gullible to believe a socialist or a career politician over your own family, then you are too far gone. There are two ways to be aware in this world. First, you must refuse to accept what isn't true. You must reject the lies. The second is to recognize and accept what is the truth and understand it for what it really is worth. My friend Negan Alexandria says... Even if they are guilty of all the crimes, the swamp, who's going to arrest them? Not the military. They're fighting from within. The Clintons, the Obamas, the Podestas, the whole cabal is getting away with murder. The Supreme Court is corrupt. Biden is sleeping and so on. Child trafficking, child killing, psychos got away with this. Notice all the arrests of these child traffickers 
and killers. Notice how they're all low-class people. No big-name arrests. No Huma Abedin or wherever she is right now. I bet Ghislaine Maxwell is working for Biden in some capacity. I heard that she was MI6 or Mossad. And she's related to Soros, sadly. She's probably not even in prison, as I said yesterday. And this is, this is just according to him. He said recently that the guilty go free and the innocent are punished. It just goes to show you a bill works in the fashion in which corporations write the bill and then bribe our elected officials until the bill passes. That's not how it's supposed to work, but that's how it works in a society gone completely mad. It is really not that hard to understand, and if you don't see it, then I don't feel bad for you. Not one bit. Because it's the truth, and you refuse to accept it. Ladies and gentlemen, we're living in a time and age where it is socially acceptable to be stupid. It's time to stop being stupid. It's time to act. If we don't act, we will never be able to take our country back. Ever. It is so unbelievably, unfathomably simple. It is that easy. Ladies and gentlemen, before I go, I would like to point something out to you that I think you should know. Almost everyone in the government is corrupt and they abuse their power in every way imaginable. And they will stop at nothing to get exactly what they want, which is a new world order. If you elect these people knowing what they've done throughout their careers as politicians, knowing that they don't stand up for you, then you are the problem and you deserve everything that you get. That being said, I'm going to conclude this episode of Spot the Liberal, and until next time, just because you are aware doesn't mean you're easily gullible. It just means you've got a lot on your plate and you know what's going on, you can't do anything about it. Have a good day, everybody.